I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and this is the third in a little series about the BITX40 single sideband 40 meter 10 watt transceiver that's available from India for only $59. What comes in the kit are some circuit boards and then a bunch of components that have to be connected to uh, jumpers and then those jumpers plugged in to the circuit board. There's also a little mechanical assembly because uh, uh, they don't send a chassis or anything. I decided to mount it in, a, in the box it came in, which as it turns out was a pretty crowded affair. Uh, but what this video does is shows how the various components are soldered uh, to the wires and how they're plugged in and so on. Uh, there are a few things I'd like to emphasize in the video. Um, first, uh, primarily, is to show some soldering techniques. Um, I've been asked about this uh, several times. Uh, we're going to talk about tinning leads, tinning the surfaces uh, for the leads, and uh, also how to use heat shrink tubing to cover connections between wires. A nice thing to do. Gives a very good insulation cover. Okay, now as we go through the video, there's uh, parts that um, are taken at normal speed and then there are some others that I've sped up quite a bit because I don't think you want to watch two hours worth of video and I'll give you a little bit of commentary during that. So let's dive in. Okay we're continuing uh, with the bit X40 here. Uh, we've wired up so far the power. Okay. The power goes to this connector back here and it's kind of looped around to a few places. We're going to do more in a minute. This is the volume control and here's the volume control leads going to the back where they plug in. Here's the output jack. I'm temporarily using the BNC connector that came with it. A lot of QRP stuff these days seems to come with BNC connectors. It just means I have to put an adapter on it which loses some signal and that's to the to the uh, antenna output right there. I've also put in some holes here and here for the some air to get to the heat sink in case the cover is closed. And the thing is actually oriented this way in the box. See the heat sink, heat sink. Okay, so we've got these things coming off the end. The 12 volts had to be brought all the way over to here. That's power. Uh, the tuning pot now is the next step that it has. Now, we've got seven wires coming out of this and we're only going to use four. What should I do? Should I roll them extra ones up and just leave them laying around in there? Well, that sounds like this would make very good little antennas. So, I'm going to follow the tip of somebody that I read here. We're going to use the purple one, um, not the blue one. So watch this. This shows how I can remove the wires okay, now I don't let's use. look at one of these up close. It's just got a little hook on the end. So this can go right back in here and hook. So now we've got this down to the ones that we actually need and we're going to carefully save these for future experiments. I'm going to shorten the cables to what they actually need to be. Now the rest shows how they're stripped and uh, tinned. Tin means putting a little bit of solder. I've got one of those inexpensive Chinese soldering stations. It's actually a rework station. It has the air too. And it's just delightful. I unboxed it in a previous video but have not have not yet reviewed it. I suppose I should do that. Okay, so we're going to tin these wires here. Now that we're up to temperature. And I apply a little bit of solder to each wire. Then I'm able to connect these. Note the capacitor that has to go in there too. So I found the capacitor and put it in right here the two holes and I'm going to put a little hook on this. It's for mechanical connection 
so they'll stay in place. Get just a little bit of solder on here to help with the heat transfer. That's soldered. And we'll do the same thing here. And checking all the connections. Make sure they're good. I'm installing it. It's just for demo in the bottle. Now note that the different color wires and stuff had to be connected. Note that I'm using heat shrink tubing, which I slipped on before, okay. no. before the soldering. Get this connection here. All right. We're going to fold this back like that. Put this heat shrink tubing over it. You can get heat shrink tubing in a variety this of one. sizes. Put this heat shrink tubing over it. And it shrinks when heated. Our hot air gun for part of the rework station. And in goes the boards with the connections made. I had a little fun getting those boards mounted properly and all the wires in place. I noticed in my little demo unit here I had some things awfully close together. This is definitely not best practice to do this sort of thing, but it's a demo. These are the little audio jacks which were a royal pain to deal with because they, they don't actually have proper connectors on the back. So I tin the leads, put little hooks on them, now, solder on these. this is important. I put a little pre-solder on the connectors. In there. And then I'm going to do my little hook. A little hook here while I now I'm working very carefully solder these one at a time. Now there's already solder on both. So let's see how this does. Both the wire and the little stub there have solder on them. My little hook again, there's already solder on both the wire and what I'm soldering it to. So there we are. Let's go ahead and install this. We're putting in the rest of the connectors here. Notice that I'm uh, kind of winding these around each other. Uh, that helps reduce any RFI effects. And here's a case again where I've got to hook it. Uh, this is the microphone uh, connection. Tin the, tin the leads uh, again. Add a little solder where I'm going to be connecting these two. Uh, connect them on up. Now I'll install it. Plug it in. And it shows that those connectors were bent. Those little pins were bent in shipping, so I just bend them slightly back. You don't want to bend those too much, they'll break. Now this is the push to talk button. Again, going through the trouble of tinning these just makes it so much easier to solder this. Also a fairly good mechanical connection there. It solders very quickly, very easily. That's the push to talk button. I decided to go ahead and put it on the uh, on the box. I may change that in the future to a button that's on the microphone. Now that's the brown wire that we're just kind of putting out of the way. Now we're very carefully checking all of the connections to make sure that they are correct in every way. Now we're going to do some continuity connections on the power. Uh, so use the little plug that came with it and I'm checking to make sure it isn't a dead short across it. 
and then that the power that's supposed to be everywhere is actually everywhere. And I just use an inexpensive little multimeter for this. Nothing dramatic is required, um, but it gets us where we need to be. Now, that blue pot at the bottom, when I put the uh, display on first, it was just green, bright green. But that little blue pot way down at the bottom of the page is the one that's used for adjusting the contrast. I had to adjust it several times to get it to the point where I could easily see the screen, as you can see right there. I had a little problem with that. Ended up fixing it. Okay, this is where I got on the assembly. After doing a little testing, I ran into an interesting problem. First of all, here's the microphone. It, I needed something to hold it to, so this is, I guess, what you'd call a pen mic. Okay, the other thing is I got um, a much heftier power connection. I just didn't like the one that was there. It wasn't making good contact. So this is a much heftier one with the power pole. I think when I do this for a final assembly, I'll actually put a power pole connector in there. Uh, note that I had to move the power connector from here to here because of uh, it just needed a different size. Now this is an addition here. I know it's big and bulky and all that sort of thing, but it's a 3 amp fuse. Now the reason that I put this in here, 3 amps is the smallest I've got, I'd like to put a 2 amp in there, is because when I was testing it, all of a the sudden there was a great deal of smoke and it turned out this is the main supply wire from the uh, power connector to the switch and it, it just it fried okay I don't know what the short was in there or whatever but it fried I got the power disconnected I think within one second of seeing the smoke it takes about three quarters of a second for reaction time and then BAM I had that thing un unhooked and it turned out that once I had disconnected this it had melted itself to the plastic case um, you can still see the effects right here where it melted to the case and it sort of melted to several other wires too so I had to disentangle all that. I did a quick a quick thing to make sure I hadn't ruined it and I hadn't uh, so <laughs> it's the only fuse holder I had but it's in line there's a 3 amp fuse I, I won't be doing this anymore that's for sure okay now a couple other things in here um, I did put this adapter so I could use SO239 uh, put an SO239 type connection right here uh, I ended up putting the volume control on the switch over here because where I had it in here was just too too close and I think something in there shorted to ground and caused that to uh, to break. Another thing that I noticed is that this um, the little um, display and the Raduino board underneath uh, tended the display wanted to fall down on top of the Raduino board and that was not goodness because it did short a couple times so I took one of the spacers and just put it in right there to keep that thing up where it's supposed to be I've got all your other connections here's the push to talk and got everything routed around now it did take a couple of these cables apart and wind them a little more thoroughly to each other including the VFO down here and so on so the thing works uh, I'll show the how it works in in another video um, and then I've got a sort of a critique on what I'm going to do differently when I put this thing together for real okay so we've talked about a lot of things uh, about placement soldering of connectors, tinning wires, uh, tinning surfaces that they're going to be connected to, uh, using just a, a very tiny piece of solder. We also talked about the power connector, uh, the mic. Notice I very tightly uh, wrapped that together um, so that 
it would be less susceptible to RFI. I have had it on the air. It's an excellent receiver. Um, and I did put it on the air and talk with a guy from California or from Colorado where I am to Indiana and it did work. So I'm going to do a little bit more of that next time. That's this video for this time. Uh, be sure to uh, click like. Um, be sure to leave a comment. You can ask questions too. And this is where I have it for right now. Uh, somebody uh, who is making a case for his is going to send me one of his cases and we'll see how that goes into that. I want to do a lot more permanent mounting. I learned a lot from here. I wrote it in my log. This is my log, 21st of February, bid X, the assembled and went in to test. And I've got this list of comments, and I had to start writing over here, this list of comments about the thing. There you have it. Until next time, 73.